Hi everyone, John Bowlerman here. Cryptozoology's most elusive bowler boy. It is winter. Time travel. Alas, I am back on the farm and I can get working on the bowler projects once again. One of the jobs will be to finish the first bowler and I had a few requests from people to actually see my first project. It was in the backdrop of the projects this summer. But yes, this special Christmas treat, we will give you guys a tour of Mel. Yeah, kittens in here. I might have to go get them. Ugh, hold on a second. So as I was saying, Let's start this tour. Was I saying that? I don't know. What you see before you is a 1968 or 69, not entirely sure, but is one of the first bowlers ever made. In fact, the serial number is 015. That's number 15 for anybody keeping count. Pretty cool. I have seen a couple older ones online, but these guys are fairly rare. They can be distinguished by the fact that the roof is flat. The first 100 bowlers called the flat roof bowlers. That's how you can tell they're one of the first ones. There's other distinguishing features as well. This is a sliding window on the door and also have sliding windows on the sides as well. I got this trailer in 2015 on a whim. Happened to be driving back from paintball for a bachelor party with cousin Brad Bowlerman. And just happened to check Kijiji and a bowler was posted. I was the first one to contact them, said I'll come see it tomorrow. Um, and had to buy it on the spot and nearly puked. Because at the time I'd got it for a good, pro well, at the time it was expensive to me, a guy who didn't have too much money at the time. And never spent that much money on an impulse purchase before. So I have some pictures, there's a picture of me nearly puking. So I'll share that. But anyway, I took it home and it was a heck of a lot of work. It was slightly different construction too on the interior than the other ones which have a lot more fiberglass, so everything's pre-made. This one was a wood interior for the benches and cabinets. So a little bit more work to replace some of the, um, the wall paneling, I'll show you that. But anyway, this was dirty, white on the top and a brown washed out brown but in the space here in the door uh, you could actually see it was a little bit sparkly so might have been pretty cool when it was brand new but it was old school it didn't have any running lights so i had to run the running lights i had to replace the handle of course because there was no lock and nothing was working replace the hinges and the door here is sagging again even though i fixed this door once should see should be I had it really nicely molded and for whatever reason maybe just the weight of it curved out again but these doors are notorious for doing the sag at the bottom because this is a sheet of fiberglass and inside there's either foam or wood dense foam or wood this one had wood in it water gets into here accumulates here rotted out the wood entirely and just sags in a big bundle of ice at the bottom, bowing out the door. So everybody who has one of these should drill holes in the bottom so any water that does seep in gets out. Or rebuild the door and I might have to do it again just because I am a perfectionist, as it were. Well, one of the things you've seen me do already is paint wheels. And this is how slick they look. 
after you paint them they're shiny and you throw on a baby moon now the tongue took a little work that I had to get the pros to do this tongue was bent up substantially here and twisted and so I had the welding shop in a nearby town cut off the tongue at this point here replace the tongue reinforce it and boom nice new tongue cost 200 bucks not bad some bowlerman configurations here well this is the main one i added a electrical box here an outlet for when you are outside camping and whatnot handy access right there and replaced the um, actual hitch new chain new wiring and a new jack I did put in new plexiglass in the front and the back new tire of course attached old school straight on the back I don't have a bumper on this old model to attach it to and I just think it looks classic that way does it rub on the paint yeah but I go classic those are new LEDs from Princess Auto, $50 each, and they go on sale for $25 each, and I was able to grab a few there. But they don't sell them anymore, so anybody looking for, to do this project will have to source that elsewhere. And most of my sourcing was things like Amazon, the American and Canadian, as well as the local trailer places, and eTrailers.com. The belly band. This was originally a white, ugly plastic one. And I sourced this from Scamp Trailers in Minnesota, Bacchus, Minnesota, that they now sell this channel belly band in eight foot lengths. Takes three, or sorry, takes four. And I was able to put this on this summer. Really finishes it up. The paint job is fantastic. I attempted the paint job and I had troubles. The yellow turned out really well. The white did not. So I had to sand it all off and sent it to a pro. Another local guy, he did a fantastic job. Thing looks cherry, boy. All right, let's go in and take a look. Ooh, that's nice with that heater. Let's just do an overview look. And we'll go look in detail here. Okay, so we're starting with the front bench here. As I said, these benches are all wood construction. And this was beaten up and ugly, so I replaced it with this wainscoting board. This door was here originally, and this is... A separate cabinet and this is for your I use this for the jacks and locks and the electrical things for outside the other cabinet was accessible from this door underneath the the cushion but I added another door such that you can access things put away things like boots and whatnot The fabric from horrible, horrible fabric land, which is expensive, and the people are such soy or boomer losers who work there. Awful, but a fantastic fabric. These curtains look pretty good in here, but these mint curtains are actually for my orange bowler. So these are just in here temporarily. I do have bluer fabric for these curtains, which looks even better than this, but they haven't been sewn yet. But that's a job that will get done while I'm here. And by getting done while I'm here means making mother do it under my supervision. Ha! Thanks, Ma! All right, let's take a look at the kitchenette now. 
All right, the kitchenette was a lot of work. It was very beaten up. They had put in, instead of the ice box that was in here, replaced it with a fridge, but it was a wider than the hole, so he had cut out the side here, this ugly thing stuffed in there, but it had compromised the integrity of the side, so this wall was falling in, the kitchenette's falling apart, the hole's big and ugly. Um, so I had to reinforce it on the inside, PL'd some, what, three quarter inch plywood onto the side to reinforce, create this, um, you know, rigidity. And I had to reclad the entire front part with some plywood to cover up the holes, recut the hole, find a nice magic chef beer fridge here, nice silver trim, new hardware, of course, all good. Taking a look at the countertop. Now this part, I did put a new countertop here. This is basically shelving. So I got that from Home Depot and used a nice stain, wash that out, urethane it, and it looks hunky-dory, if I don't say so myself. New sink, new tap, instead of the, the pump tap, I set up a 12 volt system. So I don't, not like I have hot water or anything, but the point is you turn that on, you hit the 12 volt switch here, turns on the pump and you got water pumping. Fantastic. Here is a custom made box, but this covers up the cook stove. And that's a new range. Could have kept the old one, but the old one was enamel and green. So it didn't completely match. Hand painted a bowler symbol. On the sides here, I kept these. These are the original lights, but I did replace them with LEDs. So I like to keep things as original as possible. Just updated that. Even though I have, well, the LEDs will run on 12 volt. So run on battery. And I have some pot lights from Ikea for when you are plugged into shore. Gives a lot of light in here. Of course, I add the string lights. Looks real cool. Here's the closet. Let's take a look. Fly swatter. What people do often is buy this Ikea unit. So made a shelf in there to support it on. The Ikea unit's really cool. Cost 50 bucks plus the cost of this. Can have a basket on top here. So lots of storage in the closet. And where the magic happens, the dinette. Didn't do too much with the, the table was perfect. Did replace the, the table leg. simple as that, we have a mattress. Forgot a pillow, but I got that. So there's the tour. It took many years to complete this thing because I didn't start it right when I got it. There was a lot to learn. This is slightly different build on the inside than what I could find on YouTube and other sources. Um, so I had to figure those things out. And then just had so, had so much to learn. I wasn't an expert in wiring, so I had to learn that. Never done fiberglassing and body fill and body work before. 
Never did painting, though I did suck at that. Painting the exterior, of course, the interior went very well. Aluminum work, eh, aluminum work. So all the aluminum window frames on the outside. I had to figure out how to polish that all up. So a lot of work there, a lot of elbow grease, but it looks spanking new. So how much did a, a bowler men spend on this project? A lot. But I went into this project as I'm not going to sell. I'm not trying to make money off of it. And of course, there were a few mistakes that were costly as well. Or little things that just kind of add up. But material adds up. You have to buy a tube of PL. Okay, that's good. And then you need PL again in six months, but the last tubes dried up. Primer, different kinds of paints. Wood I needed to buy. Tools I needed. Trim, hardware, accessories. The 12 volt pump that I have, that's a hundred bucks right there. Running new tubing everywhere, running new wiring everywhere. But I put in the effort because this was, at the time, a 50-year-old trailer. And as you've heard me say before, I'm giving it another 50 years. And she's a beaut. So, today's pick is Phil coin. It's a meme coin based on Dr. Phil. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't expect him to bathe with you. We'll be right back. Do, do, do. Now, how cozy is that? <sighs> Being a bowler boy is exhausting. Good thing I have this comfy bowler to retire to. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Enjoy watching me sleep. I'll see you next time.